Most synths will have some form of pitch modulation and timbral modulations like pulse width modulation or filter modulation. Those are sound design staples. But in terms of amplitude modulation, a lot of synthesizers will have one envelope and that's it. To me, that's a huge mistake. Amplitude modulation can create everything from subtle movements to dramatic timbral effects. So as in previous episodes, let's start with simple modulators and work our way up to the complex stuff. Constants, as always, are super simple. They can affect the amplitude in two ways, they can add or they can subtract. Here the wheel controls the amount added to or subtracted from our signal. In most cases we'll have a hard maximum and minimum on our amplitude. Our maximum is when we've completely filled our available headroom and we clip the signal. Our minimum, naturally, is silence. Technically you can go below zero, wrap around and invert the signal's phase, but you usually won't see that outside of CV. Unless you're in the world of modular, in which case, anything goes. When this wraparound occurs, it means that instead of a traditional attenuator or amplifier, you're using an attenuverter. An attenuverter is an attenuator that, in addition to reducing a signal, can also invert its phase. It's like an amplifier, but with positive and negative poles. Constants can also be used in conjunction with other modulators to create offsets. Here I'm routing the MS-20's wheel to control initial level. The amp envelope operates as usual, but we now have a positive offset that prevents us from fading to total silence. This is great for creating drone patches. We actually had an entire episode devoted to amp envelopes, but since it was a relatively early episode, there were some nuances that we weren't ready to explore. So let's go a little deeper. Envelopes are the most common source of amplitude modulation. In many synthesizers, they are the only source. They determine how our note begins, how it ends, and everything in between. When we previously discussed amp envelopes, we assumed that all modulation would be positive. So we would begin from zero, we'd fade up to 100%, drop down to our sustain level, and then dip back to silence after release. But some synthesizers also allow you to use inverted envelopes for your amplitude. So in these cases, you would begin at your peak, dip to zero or to an offset level, increase to your sustain level, and then increase back to 100% at release. We also didn't explore combining envelopes, which can create more interesting amplitude curves than traditional attack, decay, sustain, release. Here I'm using a second envelope with a delayed attack, so after our initial decay, the sound will swell back up. The second envelope has no release, so when we let go of the key, we'll immediately drop to our first envelope sustain level and fade from there. Sub-audio rate cycling modulators, such as LFOs, create an effect called tremolo. You may recognize this as a guitar effect used in the old westerns, or as the effect from How Soon Is Now by the Smiths. Creating tremolo is super simple. Just route an LFO to your amplitude, and that's it. Sine and triangle waves create gradual fluctuations, sawtooth and ramp waves create pulsing effects, and square waves create harder on-off pulsing effects. Tremolo deserves a place in your sound design toolbox, and if that's not enough, it's just lovely on electric pianos. But as with vibrato, the effect begins to break down as the LFO approaches audio rates. You start to hear timbral changes, and pretty soon you're in the metallic world of audio rate AM. Amplitude modulation, much like frequency modulation, creates a set of mathematically derived sidebands. But whereas FM creates a set of sidebands for every integer multiple of our modulator, AM only creates a single set, corresponding to the sum and difference of our frequencies. This doesn't necessarily mean that the resulting timbre will be simpler. In FM, we're normally dealing with sine waves. In AM, we often deal with complex waves. This means that every harmonic in our carrier creates a set of sidebands with every harmonic in our modulator. So if we have two waves, each with five harmonics, we'll have 25 sets of two sidebands. So that's up to 50 new frequencies in addition to the five in our carrier and the five in our modulator. So you can see how this could get kind of messy. If your modulator is fixed, this timbre won't track across the keyboard, so you'll have a different timbre with up to 60 distinct harmonics hiding under each key. By key tracking your modulator, you can carry this timbre across the keyboard and create musically consistent sounds. I'd recommend experimenting with fixed modulators, tracking modulators, partially or imperfectly tracking modulators, and even combinations. Remember, every distinction is an opportunity. And speaking of distinctions, there's another form of audio rate AM called ring modulation. Ring mod produces the same set of sidebands but removes our carrier and modulator frequency from the resulting signal. 
Often you'll have independent level control for the output of your ring modulator. This gives you greater control over the balance of your carrier, modulator, and sidebands. This is great for creating cymbals and other non-harmonic metallic sounds. Experiment with your carrier and modulator frequencies until you have a suitably complex timbre. Then adjust your levels until you find your preferred balance. Finally, set your filters and envelopes. Keep in mind that all of these techniques can also be applied to the amplitude of CV signals. Constants can be used to manually change the amount of CV. Envelopes can change the amount of CV in response to your playing. LFOs can create fluctuations, and audio rate signals can create even more complex audio rate signals. In other words, you have a lot of experimenting to do. If you like this video, support me on Patreon for Beyond Synth Fundamentals, a weekly companion series where we take a more hands-on approach to this material. This week we're using pitch and amplitude modulation on the quantum to create a set of samples, and then sequencing them in the dig attack to make loops. As always, I'm that beat, and this has been Synth Fundamentals. Thanks for watching.